So, hello Stephanie. I'm joined today by glass artist Stephanie Else and I'm really delighted because Stephanie's been exhibiting with Pure for a few years now and I absolutely love your work, Stephanie. So I'm really pleased that you've got brave and, you let, and you've let us do a live recording with you um, for Art360. So the first thing I'm going to do for everyone is I'm going to show you all Stephanie's website so that you know where you can go because you're going to love her work. So you know where you can go to either buy it or commission her. So let me just quickly do that. There we go. So you can see us over at the side now. And this is Stephanie's website beautiful vibrant colors this is what i love about your work it's so alive i love these as well these waves yeah. so we're going, to, we're going to ask you to talk about those in a minute and um that looks like a piece of jewelry doesn't it yeah it's a, a bejeweled pomegranate at the start of a commission yeah we'll talk and about that as well yeah, yeah i just loved it love doing it so uh, she's an award-winning glass designer we're going to ask you about that as well <laughs> so we're going to go part, across all of these subjects. Um, you've still got your Christmas Open Studio event up. <laughs> That's got to change to. That's got to change to this year. It's a little bit behind my website at the moment, but I'm going to be doing a new studio event, which needs to be updated. So yeah. watch this space. <laughs> yeah, get that get that one updated, yeah. and then you can go and you can yeah. see her work here if you click on all the various places um, and the shop. The shop needs updated as well. So. We won't go. We won't go in there at the minute then, <laughs> because by the time this goes out live and everyone's watching this, um, you would have done all those updates. So exactly, they won't be looking at the same website that we're looking at right now. So because we're making this recording um, still in March, and obviously the Art Three Sixty event that everyone will be watching and and you guys are all watching now, us talking, is in April. So Stephanie will have had time to update her website and update her shop as well. So yeah, that's the, that's her website. So when you, because I know you're going to love her work, um, when you want to buy it or commission her, that's where you go. So Stephanie, tell us why glass? I'm always fascinated by this. What, what took an artist into their particular medium? Okay, so uh, after, it was, purely by chance that I got into glass. Um, when, I, when I lived in Glasgow and I didn't do any training or anything, my, all my friends were at Glasgow Art School and the co in colleges and universities. And I was working for Strathclyde Judicial Council, believe it or not. I had the whole life of a student, so I didn't do that. I didn't think I could be, ever be an artist. It never even occurred to me. And then about 25 years ago, um, I was in London. I was actually squatting in London. I was saving up money to go traveling. And I started painting on glass. A friend of mine brought some paints over from France. At the time, they weren't popular at all. I had to paint in the garden because they were so toxic. And we just started painting bottles and jars. Started selling them on Camden Market and galleries in London. And it sort of went from there. After a few years of doing that, and just getting the money together to go traveling and come back, paint more glass. Um, I moved to Brighton and bought my partner and my father bought me a second hand kiln, which I still have. And I stuck it in his garage and I just started melting glass in it. And that's how it started. There was no training, no nothing, just just went for it like that. Just experimenting. Yeah. And that's the best of it, isn't it? That's the best no. way. You just, you know having a, a traditional art education is great and it's brilliant and you know and it takes you to a certain level but then even those people who've had the traditional art education still have to go through the experimental phase and research and trying and testing things so yeah you just missed that bit you just went straight yeah, to I've the been, testing yeah i've been incredibly lucky because everything i've made sold so i found some galleries in london so i had those connections from so from there, I've always had places to sell my work. So whatever I made, and it wasn't always like this, believe it, it's taken years to get to this stage. But um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to, to be able to experiment and have places to sell my work. But the whole thing was to get me back to India or, or to Indonesia. That's, that's where it all started. But when I got the studio in Brighton, I've been in the studio for over, well, about 20 years now. So when I started, when I moved here, I had the kiln and I, it was sectioned off 
and I shared it with a lot of other artists. And over the years, moved out, and now I have the whole place to myself, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite nice. It's a, I feel a bit greedy sometimes. I've got such a huge space, but when you're working with Kilmark, it's quite good to be, to be on your own because you want to be firing at different times. You can't have people in when you're firing. You know, I've got broken glass everywhere and shards of glass everywhere. So it makes sense to have the place to myself. But, so really um, your yeah. motivation and the drive was to make the work, sell the work, get the money, go back to India and Indonesia. And well, yeah, well, I'd, I'd leave the work with the galleries and they would sell it while I was traveling and I'd come back, I'd collect in what, I'd make more, collect my money from what they'd sold and go back. <laughs> and that, that was how I did it for years. And it's only up until about um, seven or eight years ago that I actually stopped traveling because I took on the whole studio and I, I now have to be here because I, I've got this big studio to be. <laughs> And um, I'm not sharing it now, so I, I, I can't really go travelling now. I, although hopefully, you know, maybe in a year or two's time, I'll be able to go up again. When the none of us, none of us can go. I was going to say, none of us can go yeah. travelling right now. So you're not exactly. missing out, are you? <laughs> exactly. So um, I'm quite happy being settled here now and having my studio and being able to do what I do. So do you think lucky. that traveling, all that traveling really influenced the style of glass and the colors? Do you think yeah. that had an impact on that? Definitely, definitely, especially with them. Um, my more colorful pieces, I, I, I sort of base them on, I think, about maybe being in India and the sunsets and the, the vibrancy of the colors there. And I do get a lot of influence, but also a lot of influence from Brighton, just walking to the beach, walk, walking down the beach each day on the way to work, you know, and I get different shades with the sea changing it always influences me walking past the pavilion you know all these different things around me you can you take influence from everywhere so I'm lucky to have, have this on my doorstep as well yes we do we're, we're all in we're all a sponge aren't we taking yeah. it all in but you can see those such vibrant colors they they dance they sing the colors in your glass they're not muted in any way yeah I do have the occasional muted pieces. I've got a piece here, which is um, like greys. Stunning. Greys and um, sort of a bit of black in there. And this is actually going to be one of my waves. Ah, so this is okay. the, the piece that has to go back in the kiln. But I do some muted pieces. I have like phases of trying different sort of experiments, but quite often it's just the colours that come out. And that's the thing about glass because it's so the glass itself is just so amazing the colors are just incredible and i do can, actually really love that piece i have to say yeah the, so the, how it, do you take it do you have the concept of i'm making because a lot of your pieces they go onto mirrored backs don't they yeah they do yeah so when you start making it do you start with the intention or does it just tell you as you, on your journey this is going to be a wave without the mirrored back or this is yeah I, I usually if i'm going to make a wave i think i'm going to go for this as a wave because mm. the sizes as well I, I like if i'm doing a wave because of the size of the mold i have to sort of make the piece for the mold right occasionally i've come out with pieces i've thought oh that'll look nice as a wave and i've, I've like sort of played about so but in general if I, i'm going to try and make the panels i think about the panels and how they're going to work because i don't always put them on mirror no. so for instance, there's a piece back here this isn't on mirror so um so how's people, that how is that hanging then if it's not on a that mirror is, back that has got wall mounts right it's actually on board but it has got wall mounts that can go directly into the wall they're specialized wall mounts that mm -hmm. hold the glass in place and they hold it about three centimeters away from the wall so you're still getting the light behind mm. and obviously sometimes people want work that goes in windows so they don't want any they want the light coming through so then i've got to think about that because when the light's coming through it's a lot more muted the colors get more muted so then you've got to think about colors if you if they wanted to say for instance go for the lighter grey so there's no point in doing that because it's just going to bleach the color out mm. Mm. So I've actually got a commission I'm going to be working on this week when my glass turns up and she originally wanted greys and ambers and sort of beachy colours. 
But then we got round to discussing where it was going to go, and it turns out it's going to be set into a window in her house, so a sort of partition window. Mm. We decided to go with really deep dual colours because we thought that with the natural light and it should then it will completely change. So we're going for really deep um, greens, amethyst colours, gold. Wow. So it's going to look amazing. Sounds stunning. Yeah, yeah. Sounds so, and is that quite big, that piece? It's, a, it's going to be a 30 by 60 panel. But she also, she's an acrobat. And we've taken the design from her doing one of her uh, acrobatic moves. So she's been thrown up in the air. So it's almost going to be like an art deco silhouette of her going above the sort of, on the scene. So it was originally a beach scene, but now it's turned into sort of, emerald violet sort of mm. quite a sort of strange colored sort of scene but it's going to look amazing, amazing. yeah Sounds amazing. is so, that the biggest you would go that size no, or would you... no the biggest i can get in the kiln is 90 centimeters by 48 because that's the size of my kiln shelf mm. however i have done pieces that have been maybe 10 panels of that size which right. then come together because the other side of that is, is the weight of the glass as well. When you've got a panel that weight, that, that size, it's heavy. Yeah. So to hang a piece any bigger than that is really difficult, especially for me on my own if I'm doing that. But I can just about manage that sort of size. And then you can have them in sections. So you mm. have, the biggest one I've done is like 10 panels as one piece. And you're happy to work with a client to their design? Yep. Yeah, we worked their design, but we also, you, well, quite often they'll say to me, just go for it and do do what you want, but they'll mm. give me certain colours. Mm. So then I, I'll work on the colour, the, the idea, I'll draw up a Photoshop and do a sort of mock-up of what the colours could look like together. Mm. And then we take it from there. But quite often they're very specific, but I always have to tell them that it is glass. Yes. And it's <laughs> never... It, you can, with glass, it's never hundred percent certain how it's going to come out because it moves and it does its, it does its own thing. When mm. it's in the kiln, that's it. You, you're, it's out of your control. It's the kiln gods. It's yeah, in the hands the of the kiln gods. gods. Yeah, the kiln fairies. And sometimes they can be really kind. Sometimes they can be really mean. <laughs> well, I've had some terrible, terrible disasters. So but you never know what's going to happen when you open that kiln. And usually when I've got a deadline, and it's usually a nice, big, massive piece in there, <laughs> open it up and it's just exploded or yeah. cracked down the middle, and you're like, oh, and you try not to get upset about that because it's one of those things, you know. That's it's just part of your process, isn't it? Part of it your is. process is to and, and accept that you get these amazing gifts, but you also, I know it's the same with um, anything that goes in a kiln, so ceramics, pottery, etc. Exactly. You have yeah. to be quite resilient to exactly. that, don't you? Yeah, you <laughs> exactly. Do. And try not. Sometimes it's hard when you put so much effort in. And yeah, the other the other problem I've got with the glass I use, um, I use a glass called Bullseye. It's the only glass I have in the studio because you can't get glass contaminated. Mm. It's got to be compatible. So this yes. company is based in the US. So I ship all my glass in from there. Although I get companies in the UK, I buy it from them, but they ship it in mm. from the States. So the glass comes in, but it comes in, the blues are quite stable, but the pinks, the oranges, the reds, they're all going the kiln a completely different colour to what they come out. So for instance, I can show you here. Blue, blue glass, yeah. pretty stable. Goes in that colour, comes out that colour. Right, pink glass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hence, I have to write on it with a sharpie yes. so I know what I'm doing. Because yes. I've got about five shades of pink and also the oranges, the yellows. So sometimes I'll put it in the kiln and I've not written on it. I've got the wrong, written the wrong colour on and it's supposed to be pink and it comes out bright orange. <laughs> it's some quite crazy, like, sh you get a shock. <laughs> sometimes the colours work. Yeah. Sometimes they just, they don't, they're a bit psychedelic, you know, but it's mm. always that, um, you know, mystery of glass that you don't know quite what's going to happen. <laughs> That's the amazing thing though, isn't it? 
So can you do, can you give us a little swing around your with your with your um, camera? Can you give us a little swing around the studio? Yeah. Okay. So um, lighting's not great today because I've got two studio lights on to be warm to be dazzled by my photography lights. So I'll swing it around. <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing here, so no, no, that's so. Fine. We'll I'll talk to you as you go. Okay, around. go so slowly. I'm working, yeah, <laughs> slowly. So here's my my packing table where I work here. It's got some bits on it just now. So I'll swing it round. And do you what do you do on that table? Do you cut and make the glass? Yeah, this is on this is my cutting table. This is normally covered in shards of glass and um, glass cutters and all very messy. It's very tidy today for once. And then over the back here, I've got more tables to work on and lots of old sort of stuff there. And then if I swing round here, that's my kiln. That's the kiln, look at the yeah. size of the kiln. And you've got and some glass in there. I've got some glass in there. I'm just gonna unplug. I can actually walk over there. Ah, brilliant. So, inside the kiln we have, I don't know if you can see. That's it, tip it down a bit. Yeah. There we go, yeah. Yeah, so I've got my little tiles in there, the bright and best tiles. They've just had the gold leaf put on them, the, the gold designs. Mm. They've actually, this is their, their second firing, so, and they're actually cool now. They're not, um, they cooled down yesterday, but I just kept them in there so I could show you. So they've been the through their second firing, so they're done yep. now, are they? Yeah, they're done. And if I put this down, I can show you that, I don't know what the light's like, but they've got... Oh, you know, that's lovely. They've got a little gold, they've got the pier. It looks like it's shimmering on a kind of mirage, doesn't it? Of yeah, water. yeah, well it's all got iridescence. There's all iridescent glass in there and different, some lusters on there as well to, to bring them out. Yeah, and do you so put these, these, do you generally put these onto mirrored backs then? These will be framed. They'll be framed. So, but I'd make all the frame myself as well. Yes. And I do use mirror in my frames. <laughs> <laughs> I get a mess of my frame. You I are think. amazing, Stephanie. How you do literally everything yourself. It's incredible. You are a, you really are a massively good role model. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, a bit obsessive, maybe. No, with me it's because if I um I don't know if I can see me. Yeah, if I you. need these frames to go to a framer and get everyone made size and have it there and then when I need it. Uh, it's better I do it myself. It yes. takes me a long time to learn, and you saw the first ones I ever did. Yes. They weren't great. <laughs> they weren't great, but I learn each time I do it. I learn. Yeah. So. yeah, but that means the entire item that you make is all handcrafted by you. Now, I'm not saying don't get your work professionally, absolutely oh, no. not. Do, if it's part of your practice, get your artwork professionally framed. And yeah, if you definitely. buy something from an artist, go to a framer because as we've heard from many framers and we heard from Andy, the conservationist, to look after, do you, you, you spend the most, you buy the best you can afford to buy every time because that will give your artwork the longest possible life. But in your case, the, the framing is part of the artwork. So you, that's, you know, and that is the case for some other artists. Well. And don't get me wrong, if in the future I need to help with framing, you know, I will go for it, yeah. get someone to help with frame, but at the moment I can I can you know I've got the time to do it yes yeah. and I actually quite enjoy framing now you know <laughs> I have the framing days because I, I paint I get all the wood from scratch then I paint it together paint it all myself so I get yes. a straight finish they're very simple but they look know, about they look great yeah they look great yeah, so, yeah I, hang so that, them, I hang them better now than after last time <laughs> yes we had to have a little word with, yeah, <laughs> with <it's every> <laughs> Shh, don't get, you make me sound like a bully. <laughs> I've taken it. No, no, no. You teach us. You, we, I take it I, on board because when I first did Cure, I'd never done art, art fairs before. No, I know. So I was, I, you know, I didn't know what was required. So it's, you learn, you, you each That's time what you Pure is there like, for. Exactly. That's what Pure is there for, to help the artist and to teach you along the way. And you all, you're all incredibly good students and you listen and grow and that then comes about because you sell loads of work and you're really successful. And, and then I'm really super proud mum. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> shall, I move you, shall I move you over here then? You don't want to see that. You don't want to see my kitchen area because that's no, not we don't good. want to see the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see. 
So around here, if I go slow around here, I've got another area where I've got all my other... Look at that beautiful, is. that's a beautiful big piece with the dark yeah. greens and the blues yeah. in. Yeah, so it's a shame the lights, the sun's gone in now because I've got skylights and when the sun's out. Mm. And then you can see all my frames here. Yeah, all <laughs> the frames. Um, piles of frames that I've been making. And then if we move round, we've got more pieces this way. And I've got my jewellery cabinet because I also make jewellery. Yeah, with glass. <laughs> glass jewellery. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see in there. I can't really see what I'm doing because I'm moving this yeah. out. So oh, um, and, then, and then my glass all comes in these crates. I don't know if you can see the crates. Yeah. And you can see there's lots of glass in there popped up. So and there's my old trusty second pan kiln. That's the one that your oh. dad and your partner bought yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah, they bought it for me. Um, and when it I'll I'll go back over go here. Go and sit down, yeah, then. because we're getting seasick now. Yeah. <laughs> We need to sit down before we start to feel slightly nauseous. Exactly. <laughs> That's there better. That's it. Yay! <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, they got me this kiln and um, set it up in my garage, but it's about 50, must be at least 50 years old. So when I got it rewired, all the wiring was old style wiring. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, with those big... Yeah, I know. Yeah. But he's an electrician. I'm lucky I've got friends who do this, that, and everything. So he came around to fix it for me and put a new controller in because you need a glass controller. You need to be able to control the yeah. temperatures up and down. And he said, This this is like old. He's never seen wired <laughs> like it. So he rewired it all. And it still it still works. It uses a lot of electricity that film. Uh, and it's great for jewellery and little things. It, it means I can ha have that on. And then I can make some jewellery in that kiln. So yeah. it gives me that extra. It's not bit. quite so good for the environment, the, the other no, one. No, no. But but the big kiln um, is quite quite good on electric. And mm. it really does hold its temperature. It, it holds the heat. It doesn't actually cost that much to fire it up. But it can be, the, the work can be in there for a couple of days. Depends how thick the pieces are. Mm. So if a panel goes in, I might not be able to use it for 48 hours. What's the temperature then that you have to, for a thick panel, what temperature do you have to go up to? Well, I go up, my first firing when I get the piece flat goes up to about 8 to 20 centigrade. Mm. So it's got to be held um, to a nail and you've got to mm. do it slowly through certain temperatures, yes. fast through other temperatures. When it goes for second firing, then it's even longer firing because it's got to equalize all the temperatures mm. got to equalize but so for instance when i'm putting the gold on it only goes up to maybe 700 something. is that all <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how it is. but it, it goes up much slower yeah because you've got to be careful and then that, and it has to kneel for much longer so each firing is longer or shorter but or lower temperatures but i'm lucky because i've got a controller i just control it a computerized controller I'm does it get hot numbers. in your studio when the kiln's on when it's cooling down not when it's heating up so usually i put it on especially in winter i put it on in the evening and when i come in the next day when it's <laughs> out then it's nice and warm. That's nice. <laughs> that works. <nice. laughs> that's a good. That's that is environmentally friendly. So that that's is good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, You're exactly using the heat. Well. Yeah. And tell us about your award because you were very proud of your award. I'm you? very proud of my award. So I got. Um, can't really see because it's clear. They give me a clear glass award. <laughs> so I got the London Art Awards. Um, I got that in won that in. Um, last year, 2020, during the pandemic, I found out about it. And what happened with that was, was quite strange because I I was already a finalist in the Creates Emerging Artists Award, mm. if you know, Creates yeah. magazine and, and gallery. So mm. I was in the final of their Art Award in the beginning of last year, before, before um, COVID. Mm. But I didn't win, but they still took me on as one of their artists. A lot of this work's going to them because I haven't been able to get to them since because everyone went into lockdown. Yeah. So, and then um, I was a bit disappointed not winning it, but you, you know, you actually you, you would be, but move on, um, <laughs> move on exactly. Move on. And then I got invited to um, apply for the London Art Award, and I thought, oh no, I can't, I can't go through that again. <laughs> so, 
I, I can't, I'll, I'll never, it's very rare to even get to the final of these things. Yes, so, it is. And I'm lucky because the last four, I've applied for four, and I have got to the final in every single one, and I've won two of them. So mm. actually, I'm. I'm That's fifty percent. That is really, really yeah. good going. Because I would and, say with awards, you know, it is a numbers game, and you have to keep applying. If you're good, then you just have to keep applying. You can't yeah. give up because it could be the next one has got your name on it. So yeah. You literally can't give up if you if it's an award you're going for, then you just have to keep applying. And every time something, you will grow. You will grow through the process. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So I, I, just, I thought, well, they invited me. Then I thought, well, I don't think I will. And then on the deadline, the day of the deadline, I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just, I'll, I'm just going to apply because they kept sending me emails to apply for it, and it's an invitational award. So I think they'd handpicked um, mm. Paul. So I applied for it, and then I forgot all about it. And then during lockdown, I got a call and I was just like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it really boosted things because during lockdown was so uncertain for everyone. Absolutely. And to get a little boost yeah. like that was great. And then there's some, some other winners as well. So um, I think we're going to be having an exhibition in Mayfair in September. Lovely. The winner's exhibition, so that's something nice to look forward to because that's all been postponed. That was supposed to be last year and then with everything that's been going on. It's really to lovely to have something to look forward to. And I think events going forward, you know, we'll be taking some of the digital and, and the best of the digital and the best of the real. So I think we'll be having quite a hybrid delivery of events going forward, which I think would be awesome, be yeah. incredible. Um, but that's just so lovely to have such a positive experience happen to you during such a, a difficult time. And I know, you know, you have a partner who isn't well and health can be an issue. So that's e even more wonderful for you that you have something um something yeah. so uplifting and positive happened to you yeah that was great it was great for both of us because he was that was really boosted him as well you know and yeah. it was like it was like really nice actually to, mm. to have something so exciting isn't it it's, like, it's really <laughs> exciting when you i know when i got nominated for the women in business awards i was like whoa this yeah. is exciting mm. and it really does you only need to be nominated really and um, to get that kind of buzz going on and yeah. um yeah we you know we're creatures with egos exactly yeah <laughs> you know it's just nice it's what be, it is it's nice to just have people recognize because when you when you're recognized like that and you think well i'm i'm you know, people like it. These judges are mm. like gallery owners. That they, mm. and they're obviously looking for something quite commercial as well. I think as well of as of course you have to be have so, that. In, you have to be real mm, about it. Yeah. Why are they doing the award? Well, obviously they're looking for artists, aren't they? Yeah. And why they're looking for artists? Because that's their means of making money. So we all have to be realistic about it. But your exactly. work is your work is stunning, Stephanie. And I and, and it's been such a privilege for me to be working with you. I think for five five years or so now yeah I've been, I've been be showing now. You. yeah because when i first came to you i'd never it, I, it's more along the craft yeah because this has evolved it, well, I, I think we dragged you into the fine art, didn't we? We, we, had yeah. to, we had to drag your mindset into, we dragged your mindset into fine art and then we dragged you physically. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I always thought of an artist as being someone who had to be able to draw, like Vincent Matthews. I mean, look at the way he draws. I, I, I can't draw much, I'm, I'm, I can't draw. So I never looked at myself as an artist. You know, you can think, draw because drawing is simply holding a pencil and making a mark. Well, yeah, but I can I can draw, but I can't draw anything that looks like something like shit. Vincent's work. But don't ever set yourself up as <laughs> I mean, Vincent is exceptional. Let's be honest. Yes. <laughs> Yo, no, and no, I'm an art, and you know, Louisa Crispin as well. The way Louisa. they draw, the the way they can just look at something and draw it. I think it's But amazing. they will be or equally um, in awe of the way that you gather glass and put it together and create something that is exquisite, that you is so unexpected. And mm. each art form has its own nuances that can be appreciated. And you are definitely at the top of your game of, of making that work. So, you know, that's why you win awards, Stephanie. So as much as... <laughs> They are brilliant drawers. 
they couldn't they don't make glass and you are exceptional at what you do and i as i say i'm incredibly proud of the journey i've observed you go on and and i know there are amazing things yet to happen for you because the what you make is is exquisite and your work and understanding of color is yeah incre is incredible it, oh, that's what it is color is what it's all about for me i just love color so just sort of putting glass together in the colors and the thing about glass is you can use colors together that you wouldn't normally put together especially because my work's so abstract it's, it's all abstract so you know to put different shades together you wouldn't think of purples and oranges think of yeah flash, look at the piece have... behind i mean that piece behind you is stunning that's that piece, yeah that's stunning yeah the thing with these pieces as well is that i make um so for instance the bit here in the middle i actually mm make sheets of my own glass from mm. so I'll, I'll take my hammer out I, I can get a lot of frustration out so I get my <laughs> hammer out smash up the glass and then I add it with glass powders and it's very unglamorous you know you're, you're wearing <laughs> your big mask and your, your marigolds and but you're you know you and I make these sheets and then I slice those sheets up I fire them and then I add them into my work so there's a lot of that going on as well yes so trying you to can see actually, you can mm, see sorry. that in that piece that piece in the middle you can see um the the way the the light is catching off of the center of it it's almost move it is almost moving yeah it's yeah. almost animated yeah and i design them as well to i use a lot of um lusters as well so that you've got this iridescence in there so as the light changes throughout the day it is changed. almost moving it's incredible yeah. the way you on the screen it's almost like it's liquid it is <laughs> incredible well it was at one point it was liquid at one point <laughs> <laughs> it was it was <laughs> yeah no they're stunning so if people want to commission you how do they get in contact with you um they can contact me by email or they can call me or they can well, obviously when when we can open up again they can come and visit but the best way to do it is either email me or call me email is probably best tell me roughly what they want and we can have a chat about where to move forward quite often they like to come and visit the studio if they're too far away then i can create um a mock-up design on photoshop and just to give them an idea of what the colors could look like and then we can take it from there so so your email is it's stephanie at glassinfusion.co.uk but that's all on your website anyway yeah it's it? all on my website and it's all in the art 360 magazine as well which it is been, which will be is. published by then and all your details are all over the pure arts group instagram so if anyone's watching this and they just can't pick that up then just go to the pure arts group instagram and dm us and we will very happily pass you on um, stephanie's details so final question if someone were wanting to buy something like the piece behind you, give people a benchmark price that they'd be looking at. Okay, so this piece behind me is, um, these are, no, the small ones are 325, that's the main ones on the, the website. Yeah. Slightly longer, 425 for this size. Mm -hmm. And then they go up to 750 for this size and then it just depends on the bigger pieces it's quotes to yes. you know per piece because it also depends on the colors as well because yes. some of the colors are a lot more expensive than the other colors mm. so these are I do them in a sort of this space size 60 by 15 which was the ones that i originally brought yeah. here and mm. they're a really good size that people can just buy straight off the shelf mm. but i can do them in all other sizes up to the size of the kiln really yeah bespoke up to that and yeah. the little tiles with the brighton scenes they're, ni they're 95 there you are 95 yeah, pounds, 95 people. yeah very good price for those <laughs> um but i have to say i particularly love this piece on your just over your left shoulder that it's been swimmingly wandering around while we've been chatting yeah. the entire time it's been just like <laughs> dancing in the background thank you so much stephanie and i've really really enjoyed talking to you and understanding the process a bit more and then also seeing the kiln as well that was a really lovely treat to see i hope the... it wasn't too i hope it wasn't too wobbly <laughs> no no we were fine until we started swinging and then i was yeah. like okay i'm starting to feel a bit seasick now <laughs> 
that's the thing, you know. You're by the sea. You're by. You're in Brighton by the sea. So you yeah. just took us on a little boat ride. But thank you so much. And yeah, if anyone wants to um, speak to Stephanie or buy a piece or commission her, then all the details are on her website, or they're in the Art Three Hundred and Sixty magazine, or just DM Pure Arts Group direct message us and ask us for Stephanie's contact details and we'll be glad to give them to you and um, thank you and I'll see you all in the next one of these um, recordings that we're doing um, right throughout April every day in April then you can go to a different artist studio pandemic we laugh in the face of a pandemic exactly <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you thank you for having me Leslie oh, you're welcome it's lovely to have been listening to your lovely Glasgow accent as well <laughs> yeah i never lose that do i i mean i've been away for over 30 years so i still still don't lose the accent that's so. been lovely thank you so much stephanie i've really enjoyed it and i'm really forward to seeing everyone um in the next um live broadcast <laughs>